One year ago, I made a video about Wayland and that it's not ready to be used on the Linux desktop by most. Since then, we've seen a whole bunch of updates and improvements within and around the protocol that promise to provide a better experience for gaming, work and everything in between. And in this video, we're going to find out if the situation around Wayland has changed and if it's actually ready to finally replace X11. So, quick little recap. Wayland is a display protocol that in short consists of three parts. You have the kernel that collects events like moving a mouse for example, a compositor which determines and well composites what elements on screen are affected and a client which represents an application. My last video about this topic was very negative since Wayland just breaks a lot of stuff. One issue that was very noticeable right from the start and which happened on Nvidia as well as on AMD is the breakage of extensions, like Blur My Shell for example. In a Wayland session and on a multi-monitor setup, if you don't center all displays in the middle, then your main monitor will not display the blur. If you have two identical monitors in terms of resolution, then it's kind of hard to center them in a way that GNOME actually refers to the middle and not the lower or upper border. And it's a lot of trial and error to actually get the extension working properly. The root problem of this lies in GNOME's compositor Mutter and on Wayland it just hasn't been fixed yet. And it's been quite a while. Another thing that we should cover when we talk about Wayland is Nvidia. Now, the Nvidia experience on Wayland is not bad and I didn't really have any more issues than I have now on AMD. That being said, there are a few things that Nvidia just doesn't support yet. Variable refresh rate with G-Sync for example. Now I'm not quite sure how Nvidia is going to solve this, since part of the reason on why this isn't implemented yet is Wayland doesn't offer that many APIs or any at all that can be used for that. Wayland in general is missing a lot of APIs that used to be there when you use Xorg with X11. For example, Wayland doesn't really offer any capture API, which makes screen recordings kind of challenging and you can only do this if you utilize something like Pipewire. Now over a year ago I tried to stream Ori and the Blind Forest and the frame rate was horrific. Like I mean just look at it. Another issue for a lot of gamers, especially the more competitive ones was that Wayland and no Wayland Compositor supported tearing. Now generally speaking tearing is not something that you really want for a game, but if you don't have a variable refresh rate or the compositor doesn't support it, then you experience forced vsync and a hell of a lot of latency especially for first person shooters like Apex Legends, the experience was just not as good as if you would have played on Windows. Ok, so now that we've covered all of the issues that have persisted in Wayland up until the last year, the question now is, how's the current situation and is Wayland actually ready to be used exclusively on the Linux desktop? I mean quite a lot of Linux distributions and desktop environments think so. Let's start off with the capture stutters. Over the past year, Wayland and Pipewire have both received a lot of updates and the experience nowadays is buttery smooth. For example, the last 10 videos were all captured in a Wayland session and I didn't experience any hiccups whatsoever. The Wayland protocol and many compositors now also support tearing for games, which reduces the input to display latency by quite a lot. Variable refresh rates for adaptive or free sync are now also supported if your desktop environment has implemented it yet. Another thing that is now possible in Wayland is fractional scaling. That means that you don't need to scale your desktop on 100, 200 or 300 percent, but you can also use values in between. While KDE Plasma was way earlier to adopt this, GNOME 45, if you're not on Fedora, does also support it already. That being said, Fractional scaling on Wayland is still a bit problematic if an application does not support it yet. See, in order to run applications that were programmed for Xorg and X11, you need to use something called XWayland. And fractional scaling is a bit of a hit or miss. 
KD Plasma supports fractional scaling for X Wayland apps a bit better than GNOME, but it's no guarantee that texts won't be blurry. So that is definitely something that still needs a bit of work. Another thing that also needs a lot more work and is also related to X Wayland is screen sharing. Like as I said before, recording with OBS and Pipewire works great. But the thing is that a lot of X Wayland programs like Discord for example don't use that and you just get a black screen. And even if they were to use Pipewire, even though there are no stutters anymore, it is not 100% stable. For example, if I edit my videos and I spontaneously need some footage from the web, sometimes when I hit record in OBS, my desktop session crashes altogether and I need to hard reset my PC. And that is a huge problem, especially for people who don't save their projects all that often. Now, KDE Plasma 6 and GNOME are already working on solutions that they can bring crashed Wayland sessions back. And especially the Plasma 6 demo is very impressive. Okay, up until now you've only really heard me talk about GNOME and KDE Plasma and not really on any other desktop environments. So what's up with that? Well, a lot of Linux desktop environments just straight up do not support Wayland yet. And if distributions really want to drop Xorg altogether, then this could be a problem. Now, maybe we don't need to worry. XFCE, for example, is already working on their Wayland compositor and Linux Mint Cinnamon desktop might also get it sometime in the future, but they are still evaluating. The problem that I see in the future with this is that if a popular desktop environment does not want to adapt, then you again need to make your applications for Xorg and use X Wayland with all of the problems mentioned earlier. If Wayland is actually becoming the default, then all of the applications should work towards that and drop X Wayland altogether. Only then can we really use Wayland efficiently. Especially game performance could benefit from that. But yeah, let's see what their final decision will be. In conclusion, while Wayland has received a ton of optimizations over the past year, it's not quite there yet. Nvidia problems still persist for the near foreseeable future. And I'm curious how it plays out once X11 support is being dropped from distros. The overall experience is quite nice nowadays and I actually use it as my daily driver already. The one thing that annoys me the most are OBS crashes that take the compositor down. But this happens very rarely and is probably going to be fixed in future Plasma and GNOME releases anyway. So is Wayland ready to replace X11 and Xorg? For the vast majority of people, once applications adapt and support stuff like screen sharing, then I would say yes. However, there are still a couple things missing, especially for Nvidia users. Adjusting stuff like the color temperature, dynamically swapping between an internal and external graphics card and setting global hotkeys are a bit more challenging to achieve. Now a lot of these issues can be resolved if developers start to program for Wayland directly. Wayland is usable and can replace X11, but not for all applications. And that's where I'll leave it. So if you found this video interesting, then please make sure to show it with a like and also subscribe to the channel. Oh, and if you want to access special emotes in our community and support the growth of this channel, then please make sure to check out our membership program in the description down below. And all that's left to say now is, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.